simplifying rational expressions, section 11.3. Uh, we're going to talk about how to simplify rational expressions. Rational just means fractions. I really call these algebra fractions. We're going to want to kind of simplify those. Now, we're also going to talk about the excluded values, and uh, I'm going to show you how you figure out what the excluded values will be for that problem. Um, so let's start with a definition. I kind of just ran through that quickly with you. Uh, a rational expression is an algebraic fraction uh, where the numerator and denominator are polynomial. I want to start back with good old fractions, how to reduce them. So 2 over 20, you would reduce both by 2, and it would be 1 over 10. What you're doing is you're looking at what they have in common. And so both had 2, so you divide both by 2, that turns into 1, and that turns into 10. The next one. Look at both those numbers for just a second, and think about what number they both have in common. And they both have a 5. So if you divide this by 5, you get negative 2. Divide this by 5, you get 5. So you're looking for what's in common with both the top and the bottom. So look at it, this one. I think we've done these type of problems this year already. I want to remind you, you look first at the numbers, 28 and 16. They both have in common as a 4. So this would turn into 7, and this would turn into 4. They're actually finished. 7 over 4 is finished. Now look at just the A's. This A is A to the first, and this is A to the second. If you remember what we do, they're being divided, so we subtract the exponents, but we write our answer where the biggest exponent was. So it'll be down here, it'll be a to the first. Look at just the b's. This is b to the third, b to the first. Subtract them, but you're gonna write your answer at the top because the three is the biggest. So here's the final answer. Seven on top, the uh, four on the bottom, a to the first on the bottom, and b to the second on the top. So that is an algebraic fraction reduced. So double check it, make sure you only have one variable of each type, and of course make sure those coefficients are completely reduced. Next problem. Okay, this is the excluded value problem. Uh, they're gonna give you this equation, y equals three over x, and they're gonna ask you for the excluded values. What they really mean is for what value would make you have a zero in the bottom of the denominator. And that quickly you can tell, x can be any number, but it can't be zero. And so x cannot be equal to zero. The next one is y is equal to four over x minus five. So you're looking for what value of x would make you have a zero in the denominator. And quickly you can tell, uh, if you have a positive five, five minus five would give you zero. And so x can't be five. So these are quick answers, but you got to understand what they're looking for. They're looking for what number would turn the denominator into zero. Let's make sure you see those. It's really short and simple, but make sure your eyes are always looking at the denominator. You don't care what's in the numerator. You always look straight at the denominator to see what that is. Okay, write this really big. Factor first. Before you do a whole bunch of these problems today, you have to factor before you can cancel anything out. When you're working with binomials and trinomials, you always want to factor those. So look at this fraction. The numerator, there's nothing to factor out of t plus 6. But the denominator is a difference of two squares, and you will want to factor it out. So factor it first. I'll leave the t plus 6 on top. This is the difference of two squares. It's the two binomials t plus 6 and t minus 6. After you factor, you're looking for what binomials show up in both places. They have to be perfectly identical. If you look, you see the t plus 6, so they cancel out. And so what is left is a 1 on top. When you cancel everything away, you're left with 1. And so the top is 1 and the bottom is t minus 6. Okay. By the way, if they ever ask for the excluded values on this problem, you don't look here, you look here after you factored it. The excluded values would be negative six and a positive six. There would be two answers that would give you zeros. So you couldn't have a six or a negative six. Oh, a lot of factoring. The top is the difference of two squares. The bottom is a trinomial. Remember how we factor trinomials, but don't try doing any canceling at this spot. You must factor first. So let's go to work. Back to factoring. The difference of two squares will be x 
plus 7 and x minus 7. Now, here we go. The factors of a negative 35, when added together, we need negative 2. Remember how we did our little scrap work over here? I'm thinking it's 5 and 7. One of them's negative. It's going to be the 7 that's negative. So check it. Multiply, do you get negative 35? When you add, do you get negative 2? Sure enough. So x plus 5 goes here. x minus 7 goes here. Now use your eyes. Do you see a binomial exactly the same on the top and the bottom? It's these two. I like to take my red pen and mark them off because they're canceling out. So we're going to go back and write down what's left over. So x plus 7 all over x plus 5. Again, if they asked you for excluded values, x can't be negative 5, x can't be 7. So you don't look just here for the excluded values. Look after you factored. The bottom is already factored on this one, but the top is not. Look at 3m squared minus 48. There's a GCF that you can pull out of both of those. So on the top, I'm going to pull 3 away. And let's see what happens. Are we finished factoring? No. Now we've got the difference of two squares. So go factor it out completely. I know you probably see the 3s. You want to go and get rid of them? Let's get rid of them. When they sit there like that, 3 over 3, it's 1. You can get rid of it. So this top is m plus 4, m minus 4, so you'll have the m plus 4. What goes away, Jane? The m plus 4s. Yeah, they're gone. Okay, so let me mark those off. One question, Jamie, what's left on the bottom? One. One. Is it okay if you don't write it? Yeah. Yeah. You can leave it like that, or you can make the fraction and put it over 1. I'll take it either way. On this one? Uh, M could not be, I like to tell you the exclude values, M could not be negative 4. Remember, you're only looking at the denominator for that. Okay. Oops. All right. Looks like the bottom of this one is factored. X minus 5, he's okay. But the top, another GCF. Pull 2 away from the numerator. And let's see what we get. Aha, difference of two squares. Got to go factor it out. X plus 5, X minus 5. Let's look at it. What do you see, Jamie? X minus 5. They're gone. Your final answer is 2 times X plus 5. By the way, you do not have to distribute that back out. In fact, I like leaving it like that. But if any of you write 2X plus 10, that's all right. That's all right. Okay. Last one. Okay, this is a big deal. This one has a trick to it that uh, I want your eyes to notice from the very beginning. There is something about this problem that looks weird, strange, whatever you want to call it, and it has to do with this numerator. We're not used to this y squared being written in the second spot. We're used to it always being in the first. There's a reason. We need to flip this thing around. And when you flip it around, you also need to pull a GCF out to fix this problem. So this numerator, make sure you start this one, okay? Because your eyes are going to notice when you see this problem come up. We are going to GCF pull a negative 1 out of both, which will change both of their signs, and then flip-flop them. Watch. This is just on the numerator. See, this guy, he's fine. He's in his normal order, y squared comes first, blah, blah, blah. But this is going to flip-flop it. But we don't want that y squared negative anymore. So do this. Okay? So when you see it, you go do that. I'm going to go ahead and write the rest of this problem down because this right here is why I've started. It's because you're going to have to pull a negative one out. Some, not all these problems. But 
And every once in a while they give it to you weird like that. Now let's go factor. That can be factored. That's the difference of two squares. And that can be factored. So let's see what we get. So the top, negative 1, y plus 2, y minus 2. The bottom, okay. Factors of negative 2, not many. When I add together, give me a positive 1. I know it's 2 and 1. Who's positive? Who's negative? 2 is positive. Yeah, and the 1 is negative. Let's double check. Multiply, do you get negative 2? Add those up, do you get a positive 1? Yes. So those are the ones we want. So we want a y plus 2, y minus 1. Who do you see, Jamie, that needs to be crossed out? Y plus 2. See them? They're both identical, so we're going to go get rid of them. Now, the final answer, don't lose the negative 1, all over y minus 1. You don't have to multiply that negative 1 into the 2, but it's okay if you do. 